Everyone, this is Ross, and here in Pennsylvania, we're really in the midst of fig season right now, especially in the container orchard here on the patio. You know, we're now in mid-August, and this is really when a lot of these varieties start ripening. I think I've had probably around 20 varieties ripen for me in the last two weeks alone. Um, here's a variety here called the Ruchiolo de Elba that's swelling. We also had our first Moscatel Preto today and this is suwadi over here that none of these trees actually received a head start we just took them out of the sunroom and woke them up by april 15th you can see over here this is a, a hardy chicago type called vigo vivo valencia we also have over there a variety called calderwood unknown that's ripening right now probably around five or six different figs all these didn't receive a head start, by the way. We also have over here, Brandon Street Unknown. My LSU Red, my LSU Scott's Black have been ripening up uh, with the help of our greenhouse. And getting them a head start in the greenhouse really gets you probably around a month, maybe even a month and a half of a head start. You can see here's my Nalaga. This is a fig called Nalaga that didn't get a head start. We also have the Dr. Gawadi, it's a big green fig over here, a big yellow fig that's ripening up, no head start. We also have something here called Capole Kurt Negra. I can go on and on and on with these varieties, guys. They're really starting to come in now. This is uh, the Trace Displace, one that is one of my earliest figs. And then here we have our Panache or Martinique Ramada that I, I wish would start ripening so I can figure out what it is. We also had our first Daloso today. You can see here's another one right here that's ripening. Uh, we also had our, well, we're gonna have our first Raven de Calci from France. And this is quite similar to Black Madeira, but it doesn't split. We're getting a lot of rain here recently and this one hasn't split. It's really nice to see. We also have over here something called sucrete which is a real incredible french variety that is just wonderful it really is it has a perfect texture to it it's it's wonderful um, even the flavor is really good let's keep going we also have a fig over here called uh, fico nita which is ripening up right now um, just a really a nice little variation here of varieties um, even my Cavalieri, my late varieties with the help of the greenhouse are starting to come in. We'll show you guys that tree in a minute. Here's my Jade from Portugal. This one's starting to swell. Let's see, what else do we have over here? This is the Cavalieri tree that ripened today for the first time. We even had some figs in ground, believe it or not, that started ripening for me. Um, in the last few days, I've had LSU Champagne start ripening and Campaneri. Here's our Coldenon Blanc that's actually been putting out about five or six fruits so far this year. And we're only in mid-August. I think most of our varieties in the ground will really start ripening here September 1st. This is Italian 258 here. We also have a Galicia Negra here. That's a nice surprise. It's the first one. I'll get the try off of that tree. We also have uh, Socorro Black ripening back here. And then way back in here is something called Mega Celeste, which is a really big fig that doesn't do well in our rain. And then another big fig called Paradiso from Ciro. That's a really nice fig. Very happy to have it. Um, so a lot of these figs are ripening, but still we have quite a few that have left to go. Like our Coldenon Blanc and Negra has ripened fruits, but you can see there's still plenty on here that are hard and will probably you know, start to swell in the next few days. Um, things like our Golden Rainbow still have yet to swell. Um, even our Pastelier, which uh, you can see over here has got, you know, not the most amount of fruits, but it's got a decent fruit set which is nice to see, especially after what we've learned this year. It looks like over there, Nero 600M, it's kind of ripening. I don't know if you guys can see that in there. See it? I don't know, that could just be the color of an unripe fig, but 
that's pretty cool. So the in-ground trees are not doing, they're not, you know, the furthest ahead, but they can compete, believe it or not, I'm finding with a number of these varieties and pots. So um, that's what I'm trying to focus on in the future is getting a lot of these in the ground. This is my Black Madeira KK, and one of the bigger misconceptions, I wanna talk about a few things with you guys instead of just showing off my figs, but you can see this is Black Madeira KK, and it's got a five lobe leaf here. These are five lobes. And this is what happens when we change the vigor of our trees. When we put them in ground, they have a much higher vigor to them. Versus in a pot, when the vigor is much slower and the, and the leaf pattern will be almost different. Almost always, they'll have a one to three different leaf patterns. Here's our Azores Dark from an air layer that uh, is ripening up. Our other, our mother tree is actually in the ground now. And that one's doing quite well. It's still not growing very quickly. It's not a variety that really grows very quickly. And I think that's a huge benefit. You can also see our Neruciolo de Elbow over here. We have two of these one in ground and one in pots. And the one in the ground is really not that much further behind. So we're excited for that. Um, we'll see how it does next year. But like I said, I'm trying to transition over to the in-ground trees because one, they have the potential to put out a lot more fruit and the fruit can reasonably ripen around the same time, which is really important. Um, if that wasn't the case, I probably wouldn't have any uh, or if that was the case, if they ripened at the exact same time, I probably wouldn't have any container figs anymore. Um, in fact, I'm getting rid of quite a few and only keeping certain varieties in pots for next year. One of the bigger misconceptions people have been asking me, I kind of want to just give you guys a couple tips because yeah, we're in fig season right now, but some of you guys might get a little envious or um, you know, maybe I'm coming off like I'm showing off or something, but um, Basically, I want to mention to you guys that you just have to be patient because these figs take 90 days to ripen, okay? From this size right here, 90 days later, they'll be ripe. And I know we talk about this a lot, but I've been getting a lot of questions. People have been thanking me that they've gotten ripe fruit and they've listened to my advice and it's worked. Other people are still a bit confused and I still get this question all the time. It starts out like this, this size here and then expands about, you know, I would say 10 days later to about this size right here. And then it sits here for 30 days at this size. It doesn't grow, like it doesn't grow continuously until it's full size. It grows and sits here for 30 days. Then it gets to the next stage 30 days later to about this size. And this happens maybe overnight. It'll, it'll change from this to this and you will never really notice it. And then it goes from this size to a ripe fig 30 days after that. So in total, it takes 90 days, roughly. And the only way you're gonna know, you're, you know, a lot of people are like, when am I gonna get figs, Ross? When am I gonna get figs? Well, you have to count. I'm not gonna know. When did those figs form? I have no idea. So that's really important to keep track of. And that's why a lot of my figs are ripening right now at the same time because I had pinched at the same time. I came in here 90 days ago. What's 90 days before today is May 15th. I came in here to a lot of these trees on May 15th and I pinched them. I also came in here on June 1st. So what's 90 days after June 1st? September 1st. I also came in here uh, June 15th. So I'm gonna get a lot of figs on September 15th. You know, that's just a matter of me using the right techniques at the right time and that's when these fruits produce so it's all science I, i'm not like uh you know really making this stuff up here um additionally another big thing that i get a lot of questions on is why didn't my fig tree fruit well we talk a lot about that and it really all has to do with the vigor of your tree it doesn't matter how much you pinch your tree if, that, if you have a very vigorous tree, I'm gonna show you guys my pastelier again, is that this thing just grows and grows and grows. It's almost to the top of the house here, which is roughly about eight feet. So the thing is already close to seven feet tall. In the beginning of the season, this tree was all the way down to the ground. There was nothing here, it got killed. 
So this whole year, it's grown already over six feet tall. And that's not a good thing. It just grows too fast. Our figs grow too quickly. And when they grow too quickly like this, they don't produce the fruits we want. And sometimes you have a variety that will grow quickly and produce fruits. And that's something special. That's pretty contradictory of what happens. It's kind of like this variety here called Iraqi. You can see there's little fruits forming and it's growing very vigorously. Same thing with the golden rainbow over here. It grows very quickly and it still puts out fruit. But a lot of our trees, if we prune them really hard, right? This is the basics of pruning any fruit tree. If you hard prune your trees, the re natural response is that they're gonna keep growing and they're gonna wanna keep growing and that's what they're gonna do the following year. So if you can help it, don't prune your trees. Um, also, you may not be able to help it because the cold is a form of pruning. If we get killed, if our trees get killed all the way down to the base, then they have to re-sprout from the base. Well, that's entirely a form of pruning. And therefore, our tree the following year is going to be super vigorous and we're not going to get the fruits that we want. So the only way to stop this is to either completely stop food, uh, feeding it, stop watering it, and then to also come in here and to girdle the bark. Slow down the sap flow of this tree, of each individual branch, and you will get these fruit sets, these fruit formations, these fruit buds here above the leaf stem, so you can come in here and pinch off the tip. It's really that simple, and I know people really struggle with this because this is a kind of an advanced technique. It's an advanced thing to do, but this is what you have to deal with and have to do if you live in a place that you're getting killed, your trees are getting killed every single year. I get this photo every single Every week almost, someone messages me and says, all right, well, Ross, my tree isn't, it's not fruiting, and here's a photo of it. Well, I can tell immediately by the photo that it's just growing too quickly. It's just how it is, and it's the same thing with a lot of my trees here. A lot of these trees are growing very vigorously. So those are kind of my bigger tips, guys. Those are my biggest tips for this video. I know we just showed off a bunch of the varieties, but this is kind of what you got to do if you want to get fruit is you got to slow down the vigor and when it's going to ripen is all based on the date in which you pinched it or the date in which the fig formed, right? These figs over here, if I had a guess, they probably formed about 30, about 40 days ago. So I still have about 50 days left before this thing is going to ripen, which is quite a bit considering my, the length of my season here. So anyway, guys, that was this little PSA video uh, slash show off type thing. I don't know. But um, all right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. You learned something. We'll come at you guys again for tomorrow's video with more information. Talk to you soon.